The Salem witch trials are well known around the world. Nineteen men and women were accused and executed for being witches. But what happened in order for these 19 people to be accused of witchery? Today we'll be answering that question and more. To really understand why the trials occurred, you would need to know what was going on at the time. Salem was a small colony in Massachusetts Bay. Fear was an ever-growing seed. Native American attacks were always anticipated, a recent smallpox epidemic scared many, and a strong religious belief all piled up. Families also contributed to the conflict. Many of the families struggled to get along, but when Reverend Samuel Paris became the first ordained minister of Salem in 1689, things came to a boiling point. Back then, religion was a very important part of life. The devil was usually blamed for seemingly supernatural troubles. With all of his trouble, something big was about to happen. All it needed was one more ingredient. In January 1692, nine-year-old Elizabeth Paris and 11-year-old Abigail Williams began having fits, screaming, contortion of the body, and odd noises. The local doctor, William Griggs, diagnosed them with bewitchery, a serious thing at the time. Soon after, multiple other girls began showing similar symptoms. There are many claims as to why this happened. Some say that epilepsy or Lyme disease is the culprit, while others say ergo poisoning is more likely. In late February, they had three suspects, Tichuba, the Paris' slave, beggar Sarah Good, and the elderly Sarah Osborne. At the start of the trial, Good and Osborne denied having anything to do with it, but Tichuba confessed, claiming that she had met with the devil and made a deal with him. Chaos soon began to take over the town. Soon, more people were being accused. Martha Corey and Rebecca Nurse, who were very active members of the church, were accused of witchery. All the accusations began to overwhelm the local justice system, and in May of 1692, William Phipps, the new governor of Massachusetts, established a new court to hear and decide on the problems of the counties. The judges were Hathorne, Samuel Sewall, and William Stoughton. On June 2nd, Bridget Bishop became the first to be convicted during the Salem witch trials. Eight days later, she was hung on Gallows Hill. Methods of execution have long been discussed throughout history. Many gruesome methods have come into existence, such as flaying or the bronze bull. But hanging seems to be a moderately clean and quick method. Hanging was first used by the British as early as the 5th century. Since then, it's been used to execute millions. It was also popular because it was a very public way to execute someone. If someone wanted to send a message, hanging was the way to do so. Screw posters. But, in all, how many people died? Well, in July, five more were hung after Bishop, then five in August, and eight in September. Many witches also died in jail, but in an extremely gangster move, Giles Corey was pressed to death after refusing to plead guilty. He was the only recorded person to die this way. Soon, the public support for the trials was waning. They soon began to realize that it was getting out of hand. Governor Phipps dissolved the court of Oria and Terminer in October after his wife was accused of witchcraft, and in May, all of those in prison or accused of witchcraft were pardoned. The Salem witch trials have taught us many things. For one, it played a part in the guarantee of legal representation in court. It also showed us that the power must be checked, and statements and suspicions should be taken lightly. That's all for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe for more. See you next time.